latest episode of the B-Movie Club. I'm your host, Kevin. This week we're going to be discussing the 1995 horror classic, Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight, starring Billy Zane, Jada Pinkett, and Thomas Hayden Church. For those of you joining us for the first time, the B-Movie Club, it's kind of like a book club where I will post things online, what movie we'll be doing, and you can respond, tell me your personal opinions of it, your thoughts, your feelings, your deepest secrets about the movie, uh, or about your life, whatever. Any favorite quotes or favorite scenes, we'll talk about them on the show. If you'd like to subscribe, you can always do that by going to our YouTube page uh, at KD9575, The B Movie Club. You can also reach me on Twitter at KD9575. And don't forget to go to our Facebook page, the original B-Movie Club. Check that out, and please hit the like button. Also, we have some um, sponsors that you can see. There's a banner at the bottom. There's some commercials that pop up. If you ever go to those sites and take advantage of those crazy offers, we get a little something from that as well, so please check it out. 1995, Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. In this story, you've got Frank Breaker, who is played by William Sadler. He's on the run. We don't know from what. Eventually, we discover he is somebody who has an ancient key that he's carrying with him. It's not just a key. It's also got kind of like a vial with some kind of reddish liquid in it. Um, he's on the run. Billy Zane is chasing him. We don't know much about Billy Zane either. There's a big car crash at the beginning of the movie, and both men seem to walk away from it. So it's all very strange. Eventually, Billy Zane tracks uh, William Sadler to this old, uh, I mean, it's like a motel, hotel, holiday inn, um, where he uh, is staying under an assumed name. And there's all the people who live there as well. Um, we eventually find out Billy Zane is a demon. He looks like a normal person, relatively speaking. He is Billy Zane, after all. Uh, but he's actually a demon knight. And he's out to get that key. Evidently, there were seven keys across the known universe. And whoever has the keys can control the fate of the world. Um, Billy and his demon buddies have got six of the keys. The last key, Frank Breaker has they get that last key, then the demons will take over everything that we know, which would be a bad thing. Um, <laughs> so when Billy Zane is revealed to be a demon, um, he starts creating a bunch of little crazy demon creatures coming out of the ground to go into this hotel to get at the people. Now the only thing that can stop them is that that key with the reddish liquid we discover the reddish liquid is actually the blood of Jesus, which is bad for the, uh, for the uh, demons. They don't like it, as you might imagine. And what he can do is he can take a drop of the blood and put it in like a windowsill or a doorway, and it seals that doorway so the demons can't enter. Um, so obviously they, the key hurts them if it touches them. The blood obviously hurts them if it touches them. The only other way to kill a, a demon is if you shoot their eyes um, or poke out their eyes or do something bad to their eyes, that will kill them as well. So, there you go. So, the demons are kind of like these uh, alien-looking things. They're dark and big heads and, I don't know, they just look kind of scary. Um, inside the hotel, we meet a, castly, a ghastly uh, crew of people. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church, uh, who you might remember, he was in Sideways and he was on Wings 100 years ago. He plays uh, kind of this... Uh, uh, not very happy character named Roach, kind of a jerk. He like washes dishes at the local diner. Uh, there's also Jada Pinkett Smith, who is a young troubled girl, who uh, uh, she's on work release from prison or something like that. Uh, she's got to like wash dishes there. Everybody's washing dishes, evidently. There's a lot of other people there. Uh, there's the lady who runs the I guess, you know hotel or halfway house, whatever it is. There's like a hooker who evidently applies her trade there. There's also a crazy postal worker who lives there. There's the town drunk. There's a lot of people who live there. Um, and they kind of band together against the demons, or so they think. Roach, Thomas Hayden Church, has decided that if they give 
breaker to the demons and the key to the demons, then they'll all be saved. They'll, they, all they want is the key, let's give them the key kind of situation. So over the course of the movie, people get killed by the demons. Some people get possessed because Billy Zane will pop up and kind of seduce them, offer them whatever it is they want. Um, and then they become demons. So one by one they're picked off until finally there's only one person left. It's Jada Pinkett. Spoiler alert. Evidently, Frank Breaker is 100 years old. He fought during World War I. And at that time, he was given the key by the previous key bearer. Um, and basically that's their job, is to protect the key from the demons. And however long that takes, once every 100 years or whatever, the stars align just perfectly. And the demonite appears to try to get the key. So you have to protect the key until such a time as that occurs. And then when you get killed, which Breaker does, spoiler alert, he passes the key to the next keeper, key master, whatever. So that's Jada Pinkett. She survives the night, and then she, it ends with her getting on the bus, preparing to be the next stage of all this that's going on, protecting the key from the demons. So there you go. Hope I didn't spoil too much for you. Um, it didn't do very well at the box office, as you might imagine, even though Tales from the Crypt at the time was like a very successful TV show on HBO that had been on for quite a while. Um, didn't do that well. I think this movie is great. I mean, it's got, it's scary, but it's mostly kind of funny and campy because that was what the TV show was like. Like, um, it was meant to be kind of, you know, there's demons, there's monsters, blah, blah, blah. But it's kind of tongue-in-cheek. It's a little campy, which is one of my favorite things about it. If you like kind of campy horror, I highly recommend it. Um, Tales from the Crypt. Back in the 50s, there was a comic book series called Tales from the Crypt. There was also other things like Vault of Horror, things like that, which dealt with this kind of lurid subject matter, a lot of morality tales, um, you know, people making bad choices, and then the zombie gets them or something like that. Uh... And basically, when the 80s rolled around, HBO was, had gotten into the business of uh, making TV shows for their network in addition to showing movies. And a group of like Hollywood heavy hitters such as uh, Joel Silver, Robert Zemeckis, uh, Walter Hill, uh, Richard Donner, uh, produced the show, Tales from the Crypt. And each week, they'd have a new episode, kind of a Twilight Zone kind of format, uh, where they'd bring in kind of quasi-famous people like Andrew McCarthy and, <laughs> and Mariel Hemingway, those type of uh, actors, to be on their show. And, you know, it was, it was kind of scary, but not too scary. A little campy, a little tongue-in-cheek. Um, and it did well. It was on for like six or seven years. Um, eventually, it got canceled. Before that, they were like, you know, we need to springboard this off into making these movies, the Tales from the Crypt movies. Um, and the original plan was to make a trilogy of Tales from the Crypt movies. Uh, there was going to be a movie uh, called Dead Easy that was supposed to be about zombies in New Orleans, and there was another script that they were working on, and eventually they tossed all the scripts out, found this one, which was supposed to be made actually five or six years earlier, dusted it off. They felt it was more Tales from the Crypty, I guess, uh, and went ahead and did that and made the movie, and they're like, and we'll make two more sequels after this. Movie did, I said it did not great, but the budget was so low, didn't really have to do spectacularly. I think it made it made its money and then a little extra. Wasn't a big blockbuster by any stretch of the imagination. Did well enough, they're like, okay, let's continue with um, the trilogy. A year later, they made Tales from the Crypt, Bordello of Blood with Dennis Miller and Angie Everhart. Did not do well. It was a total bomb. I actually kind of enjoyed it. Corey Feldman's in it. What's not to like, after all? Um, so they said, you know what, forget this, and junked the whole trilogy idea. Although, about seven years later, they made the last movie of their trilogy, Tales from the Crypt, Ritual, which had a well-pastor prime Jennifer Grey and a well-pastor prime uh, Craig Schefter and uh, well-pastor prime Tim Curry in it. I actually just saw this recently. Not a good movie. There's a reason why they waited several years. It was actually only released overseas. Didn't do very well. Um, 
Billy Zane, this was in the height of his popularity. I think he did Titanic a couple years later. Jada Pinkett, still just Jada Pinkett. She didn't marry Will Smith until several years later. This was kind of a kickoff. She'd just done A Mess to Society a couple years prior. Now she's a big star. All because of Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. So there you go. Again, it is streaming instantly on Netflix. Check it out. Um, I highly recommend it. Again, if you're kind of put off, hey, I don't like scary movies, it's really not that scary. It's mostly funny. A lot of one-liners, which I highly enjoy. Um, it got a 29% rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, which that's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. It is obviously not nominated for any Academy Awards or Golden Globes or Critics' Choice or anything. Uh, but if you got a few uh, hours to kill, you're, you're on the treadmill, for example, let's say, and you want to watch something, I recommend it. Check it out. Next week, we're going to be doing the 1986 comedy classic, Better Off Dead, starring John Cusack. It is not streaming instantly, I'm sad to say. So you might have to dig in your closet, find your old copy, blow the dust off it, put it in your VCR, and check it out. Send me your questions and comments, any favorite scenes or favorite quotes, like I said before. You can reach me on Twitter at KD9575. You can post it on our YouTube page, uh, B Movie Club. Also, you can post it on our Facebook page, The Original B Movie Club. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote, and here it is. Whew, at least we're all in one piece. Oops. Sorry about that, Irene. Anyway, thanks for joining us next week. 1986 is Better Off Dead. Have a good one and be well.